24 to 70, 2.8. Canon or Tamarin? Which one's better? Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So it's tea time once again. Now I had another topic that I was going to talk to you guys about and I'm gonna postpone it because about 10 minutes after I arrived in the studio, there was a honking outside. And usually that's like UPS or FedEx or DHL or USPS or someone with a package for us. Well, that's exactly what happened. It was UPS and a package came from Tamarin. Now, let me preface this with about a month ago, I'd say maybe three and a half weeks ago, the VP over at marketing at Tamron reached out and said, hey, we got a new lens out. Do you want to test it out? And I said, sure. When will I get it? They're like, well, we don't have any available right now, but we'll put you on the list. And as soon as it's available, we'll fire one off to you. So I said, great. Well, that's what happened. So I see that it is from Tamron. I'm going to do an unboxing today, give you some of my thoughts. And then in the next video, I will get into the actual review of the Tamron 24 to 70. And I'm probably gonna compare it to the Canon um, that I have that I've been shooting for years that I just absolutely love. It's my go-to lens. So let's get into this real quick. I'm gonna open this up real fast and see what we got going on over here. Now, you saw the label said Tamron, so I'm gonna guess that's what it is because I don't have anything else specific that's coming from them. So, all right, here we go. Well, we have a value on this. What do we? What does it say here? Yeah. So here he is, eleven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So you know what the retail is on this. Let's take a look here. I love, I love, I love that smell. I know it's kind of weird, but I love the smell of plastic, like new, like new products, you know, new stuff. I just love that packaging smell. I don't know if it's the glue or what it is, but just it smells awesome. We need like, forget about like 4K, we need like smell-o-vision or something, right? So let's get right into this. Let's get right into this. Oh, nice. All right. We don't have to worry about warranty, model number, all that. We'll set that aside. Yeah, here we go. We have a lens hood. Let's take a look at this. Not bad. Got a pretty good weight to it. Well, I like that. Check that out, guys. That's kind of cool. That's different. Usually you get like pleather or plastic, you know, case for the lens. This is almost like a felt with a nice hard bottom. I like that it's for standing it up or whatnot. That's pretty cool. Nice tamarind. Like that. And let's see the lens itself. Here it is. Let me get rid of this box off my desk so that you can see what's going on here. Brand new, spanky new, look at that. Do you guys save these things? The little silica packets? If you don't, quick tip, save them, keep them. I have like a whole pouch full, I always save these. And what I do is whenever I store like hard drives, when I do backups or anything that is sensitive, to humidity. Now I'm in South Florida, so there's a lot of humidity. These things are like godsend. It's just awesome. Let's say I'm not using this lens. I'm not going to use it for like an entire season. I'll stick it back into the packaging. I'll throw the silica um, gel into it. And I know that it's not going to develop fungus or any type of, you know, problems internal to the lens. So you could do that with everything. I also put it into my hard drives. I'll do backups onto like raw drives and I'm not going to use them because they're just for archival use. I'm getting off subject, but anyways, I'll take that drive and I'll store it away and I'll put one of those silica packets in it and it keeps it nice and fresh all the time. So anyways, just went off topic like I do sometimes. Nice. I like the weight of that. See, this feels like a quality piece of glass. There you go, guys. You see that? Nice. Nice. Give it the little spin around. I'll do like the Vanna White or something. Pretty good. So on the side, what we have, we have VC on, VC off. That is your vibration um, compensation, or we call it image stabilization or whatever. Um, and we have AF versus MF. So we can go manual or autofocus. And that's it. Not a lot to it. You also have a lock 
on the back side. Your zoom, you lock it in and out. So this looks pretty good. I like it. I like the weight of it. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Here's my Canon version of this, right? So you can see they are pretty close, right, guys? They are pretty close. Not too different in size. In weight, I would say they're pretty close also. You know what? I got my Pitney Bowes here. Scale. Let's go ahead and weigh it. What do you think, guys? Can you see this? I don't know. Hopefully you can. Is it on zero? It is on zero. All right. So what does the Tamarin show? So the Tamarin is two pounds, 1.6 ounce. Two point, let's call it two pounds, two ounces. And the Canon is two pounds, let's call it three ounces. <laughs> so you're literally like one ounce difference between the two. Now, even though that the weight is the same, I noticed that it looks bigger. The front end looks bigger. The glass is bigger. And sure enough, it is. So your filter would be 77 millimeters. This is 82. So I do not have a filter for that. So we're not going to use it with a filter anyways. I'm going to be doing some tests probably in studio, a couple things outside or something. And that's about it. But you're looking at five millimeter difference in the in the actual lens itself. So that is interesting. I wonder how that's going to play a factor in the images that we get. So the initial feel on it, I would say, is they're very, very similar. I do notice that, as you can see here, the focus ring on the Canon in comparison to the Tamarin is different. You have a focus ring on the upper end of it towards the lens on the Canon. Whereas on the Tamarin, your focus ring is back here, which is like closer to the camera and your zoom is in the front. So basically it is reversed. Also what you'll notice is zooming is in reverse also. So if you zoom to full 70 millimeters, the lens will come out to 70 millimeters, right? When you zoom to 70 millimeters on the Canon, you're actually bringing the lens in. Whereas if you go out all the way, you're at 24 millimeters. So everything is opposite, <laughs> okay? So as far as a general look at it, you're looking at things being different, things being opposite, things being in reverse, but the weight itself, feel almost identical. Obviously, we're literally an ounce difference, but also the lens size, you're looking at five millimeters larger on the Tamarin in comparison to on the Canon, the Canon being 77 millimeters and the Tamarin being 82 millimeters. So that's very interesting. I don't know how this is going to play out, but we're going to soon find out. So guys, what I'm gonna do is in the next video, I'm going to take the Canon and the Tamarin, I'm going to set them up on a tripod first, and I'm going to do some just general clarity, sharpness, and how it comes directly from the factory with no calibration to it at all, just to see how they stand. I'm going to also set my calibration to zero on the Canon so we get an idea on how it comes from the factory, how off they are. Now. I just got a message from a girl just earlier today and they want to know why do you calibrate or, you know, we talked to Nikon and Nikon said, oh, you don't need to calibrate. And I think that's just, it's, it's just hilarious because we know that as photographers that do this professionally, DSLRs, whenever you attach a lens to a camera body, there's a slight variance on how they come together, right? And that variance is what causes a shift to either back focus or front focus, all right? So and that's why we have autofocus lens compensation or autofocus lens correction or calibration so that you can set that in the camera. So for example, if I put this onto a camera, it might be I need plus two to get the autofocus spot exactly right, whereas this one might be negative three. And every time you stick on a new lens, it's different. And when you do the calibration, okay, the camera remembers it. So once you put this Tamarin back on, it's like, hey, oh, that's the Tamarin G2, you know, 24 to 72.8. Let's do negative two compensation or whatever the case might be. So 
Calibration is important. So we're going to take a look at calibration, how it comes from the factory, and then I'm going to calibrate both of them and take some test shots to see the clarity, to see which one looks better. I'm also going to do some low light stuff and see how it works as far as with the autofocus. Does it still, is it as quick as each other? Is one faster than the other or whatnot? That's important, especially for wedding guys. I hear that a lot. People that are dealing with low light all the time. And then I'll probably do a couple of test shots, maybe outside, maybe a flower or something ridiculous like that, just to see real world how they work and is one better than the other. And we're going to look at the cost comparison between these also. So anyways, I'm going to do that in my next video or maybe the following after that. I'm going to get some time, you know, in the seat with this lens. And so this way we can do a good comparison between the two and just see which one is right for you. Price and value, right? The value is what a lot of you guys are looking for because you have only a certain amount of money to be able to spend on stuff, right? So you want to buy the best, but you also want to get the best value for your buck. So that's what we're going to look at in the next video. So all right, guys, this was a little bit of an impromptu unboxing. I'm really happy that we got this 24 to 70. Um, from Tamarin. I'm really excited to be able to test this out. I am a proponent of Tamarin stuff because one of my favorite lenses out there is a Tamarin 90. It's unbelievably sharp. It's just, it's crazy sharp. Um, so I really like Tamarin as a third party in comparison to the Canon glass. They really do a good job and I'm hoping this does as good of job as some of the Tamarin glass I already have. Out of all the third parties that are out there, Sigma and all the rest, I really like what Tamron's been doing as of late as far as the quality. Now, I'm not being sponsored by, I don't receive any money from, I am absolute, I don't really care who is the winner, quote, quote unquote, or who I like better, it doesn't matter to me. You're gonna get an unbiased review of this lens in comparison to the standard Canon glass, L glass, professional glass that you'd get from the manufacturer himself. So that's really about it, guys. If you like the content, as always, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe by smashing that subscribe button and share this video with your friends, family, or fellow photographers that might find it enjoyable. And finally, Finally, guys, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find a lot of photography tools that I've invented for photographers just like you. That's it, guys. I'm out of here. I'm excited about doing this. This is going to be fun. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.